This is part three of topic three on material structures. Last time we talked about the simple cubic unit cell, so now I'd like to turn our attention to a more, much more complicated unit cell. That's the face-centered cubic unit cell, or FCC. You can see here in the ball stick model that you have eight atoms at the corners of the cube, but now we also have an atom sitting in the center face of each cube, side of the cube. This is the hard sphere model. It's a little bit easier to see in this model what you're looking at. You've got an eighth of an atom in each corner and a half an atom along each face. This is what it would look like if you had many unit cells all stacked together. In fact, if you go to the grocery store and you look at the apple or orange section, you'll notice that the apples are actually stacked in the same pattern as an FCC unit cell. So if we look at the number of atoms per unit cell, we have six face-centered atoms but only half of those atoms are on each face, and eight corner atoms, but only one-eighth of those atoms are inside the unit cell. Therefore, the number of atoms per unit cell is six times one-half plus eight times one-eighth, which is equal to four. Sorry about this. Therefore, the total number of atoms per unit cell is four. That's a lot more than we had in the simple cubic, just by adding the face atoms. So what's the lattice parameter for this cubic structure? Well, let me switch over to my pen, if I can. Well, the way we want to solve this problem is to first look and determine where do the atoms touch each other. They touch each other along this face diagonal. So we could write down the face diagonal, if I can do this with my pen. Sorry for the bad hand handwriting. That face diagonally is equal to four atomic radii. But it turns out that that face diagonal is part of a right triangle. If I can draw these two sides here. That's sort of close to a right triangle. And each triangle has a side A, or length A, the lattice parameter that we're looking for. So that means that if I use Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus A squared, oops, this is terrible, equals quantity for R squared. And if I solve for that, I get A equals 4r over the square root of 2. I'll let you solve that for yourself to prove it to you, but that is in fact what the lattice parameter is. And again, the lattice parameter depends on the radius of the atoms inside the unit cell. Now if we calculate the atomic packing factor, we would take the volume of the unit of the of the atoms, excuse me, which is 4 the number of atoms times 4 thirds pi r cubed divided by a cubed. So in this case it's not 2 r cubed, it's 4 r over the square root of 2 cubed. When we do that math we find out the atomic packing factor is 0.74. That's a lot higher than the atomic packing factor for simple cubic crystal structures. In fact this is the highest possible packing factor for spheres in three-dimensional space. In other words you can't pack atoms any tighter than 74 percent efficiency. That means 26% of the space inside the unit cell is unoccupied, is empty. Now that's astounding. If you took a chunk of aluminum and held it in your hand, 26% of that volume of the aluminum isn't really there. In fact, if you looked inside the atoms, you'd realize the nucleus is only, a, where the mass is, is only a small portion of the total volume of the atoms themselves, about 1%. And 1% of the nucleus is actually made up of things that carry mass themselves. So 1% of 1% of 74% is actually has mass in it. What this means is that chunk of aluminum mostly doesn't exist. And think about it. Aluminum is packed as efficiently as possible. Are you packed as efficiently as possible? I don't think so. That means you don't really exist. Kind of freaky, huh? Well, what atoms actually form the FCC crystal structure? The most common are iron, aluminum, copper, nickel, gold, silver, and quite a few others. There's one thing that all these metals have in common. They're all very ductile metals. And as we'll see later on, 
The crystal structure has a lot to do with how ductility happens inside of a metal. The next crystal structure I'd like to introduce you to is the body-centered cubic crystal structure, or BCC. It has one atom in the body center, here, and the eight corner atoms. So there's a total of two atoms per unit cell. What's the lattice parameter, you ask? Well, the equation is A equals 4R over the square root of Ike's 3. I'll let you figure out how we solve for that, but I'll tell you it has to do with Pythagorean's theorem again. This would be a really good final exam question. What's the atomic packing factor? Well, it turns out the atomic packing factor is 0 0.62. Not as good as the FCC crystal, but better than the simple cubic structure. And as a result, we see many metals that have the BCC crystal structure. They include iron, manganese, cobalt, vanadium, titanium, and quite a few others. And what do all these metals have in common? They're fairly brittle metals. So BCC structures are fairly brittle, while FCC structures tend to be more ductile. You may have noticed something strange. Iron appears both in the FCC crystal, let's go take a look, yep, there it is, and it occurs in the BCC crystal, right there. It turns out iron is what we call polymorphic. Poly meaning many, morph meaning shape. So iron can be both FCC crystal and BCC crystal. It depends on the temperature. At room temperature, iron occupies the BCC crystal structure. At high temperatures, it occupies the FCC crystal structure. The last unit cell I'd like you to know about is the hexagonal closed packed crystal structure. It looks just like the hexagonal crystal structure we saw earlier, except there's one addition. We've added a plane of atoms in the center called the midplane. And there's three atoms that sit on that midplane. We have one atom in each of the six hexagonal corners of what's called the basal plane. And there's two basal planes, one on top and one on bottom. And then there's a face-centered atom that sits in the center of the basal plane. So if we want to figure out how many atoms are inside the unit cell, we have to realize that one-sixth of each of the 12 atoms, atoms on top and bottom are inside the unit cell. One-half of each of the face atoms is inside the unit cell. And the three atoms forming the mid-plane triangle are inside the cell completely. So the total number of atoms inside the unit cell is six. The lattice parameter is defined by the ratio of the height, C, and the width of the hexagonal length, A. And typically that value is around 1.63. So the hexagonal closed pack cell is slightly taller than it is wide. And the atomic packing factor is very high. It's also 0.74, exactly the same as the FCC crystal structure. What that means is the hexagonal closed pack and the FCC are just as efficient as packing space. So we should see lots of materials that have the hexagonal closed pack crystal structure. And in fact, we do. Materials like cadmium, magnesium, zinc, titanium, and a lot of others. What do all these metals have in common? They're very brittle metals. Hexagonal closed pack is terrible at allowing for ductility, and we'll see why later on. Again, you'll notice that titanium appears both here in the hexagonal closed pack, whoops, and also here in the body-centered crystal structure. Again, titanium, like iron, is polymorphic. At room temperature, titanium occupies the hexagonal closed pack, but if I heat it up, it can occupy the body-centered cubic structure. We'll talk about other types of crystals in the next